Hi explorers! We're looking at a new book of the Bible today, the book of Mark. It's one that we looked at a few months ago and we got up to about chapter 8. I wonder how much can you remember about Mark? It is the second book of the Bible. Did you, oh, Sorry, not the Bible. The second book of the New Testament. Did you get that? And it's a gospel. It's all about the life of Jesus. And Mark wrote his gospel full of action. He tells us lots and lots of stories about all the miracles Jesus did, all the people he met, and all the things that he said to them. And when we were last looking at Mark, we knew that Jesus was leaving lots and lots of clues for his disciples to figure out who he was. And at the end of chapter 8, Jesus turns to them and says, Who do you think I am? And Peter replies, drum roll please, You're the Messiah, God's promised king. Great job, Peter. Ten points to your Hogwarts house. But that's not all that Jesus had to tell his disciples. He had another lesson for them to learn. And that's what we're looking at in our passage for today. So if you haven't got your Bibles already, go and grab them. Open them up to Mark chapter 8 verse 31 to chapter 9 verse 1 and read them together. You can pause the video while you do that and I'll be back here. All done? Okay, so Jesus had a really important message to give to his disciples. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Very, very sorry. Hello? Oh no! Oh, of course, I'll come straight away. Guys, what happened? I thought you were at your football match. I just don't understand. Our captain came over and told us that we should lose. And not just lose, but lose by like 10 goals. It was so strange. He told us to lose, but we wanted to win. Sorry about that, everyone. It was just so strange. Don't you think that was odd? Why would Nisha and Rohan's captain ask them to lose? That's not the point of football. The point of football is that you want to win. And that's exactly what was confused Jesus' disciples. He had told them that he was the Messiah, God's promised king. And that meant, they thought, that he was going to come in, overthrow the Romans, let the Jews be free in their promised land. And he was going to rule in power over them as their king. But Jesus told them something completely different. Jesus said that he was going to suffer, he was going to be rejected by people, and he was going to die. That didn't sound like what a king would do. That sounded like what a loser would do. Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to lose. And that confused them. It confused Peter the most. He tried to tell Jesus to stop saying those things, but Jesus told him off. He called him Satan. That's because Jesus knew how important it was that he had to suffer and die and rise again. Anyone who tried to stop him from doing that was like Satan. Peter and the disciples had learnt the lesson that Jesus was the Messiah. They followed all the clues and they knew that it was true. But they didn't know this new thing. They didn't know that following Jesus would be the hardest thing that they could ever do. But it would also be the best thing they could ever do. Look in your Bibles with me in chapter 8, verse 35. Jesus says to them, Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. What a strange thing to say. If you lose something, how can it be saved? And yet that's exactly what Jesus is saying to them. Jesus lost his life that we might be saved, that we might have life forever with him. And that means that even if we are the biggest losers in the world, we are still saved forever with him. And in fact, that's not just something that might happen, but that's something that will happen if you follow Jesus. If you follow Jesus, you are signing up to be a loser with him. You are signing up to do things that are really difficult and things which people might not like you for. You're signing up to say no to sin 
and yes to God's ways. No to what we want and yes to what God's want. What do you find the hardest about following Jesus? That's a good question to talk about with your families. It might be that you find it really hard to tell people about it in case they laugh at you or make fun at you. It might be that you find it really hard to follow Jesus every day and saying no to sin. Like when your sister is really annoying and you just want to shout at her and hit her, but instead you have to be patient and kind. That can be really hard. The disciples wanted to be winners today. They wanted to be on the side of the king. But instead they found that to follow Jesus means being losers today. But we're not losers forever. Because Jesus has died and rose again, he's defeated sin and death. And if we follow him, we know that we will get life forever with him. We might be losers today, but we will be winners forever.